Hello everyone, Rapture here. You're about to listen to Directional Influence episode 40. As you can see, there are two parts, and the reason why we did this is because we had so much awesome material that we didn't want to, uh, I guess, not release some of it because of how much there was actually there. So we are releasing two separate parts, episode 40.1 and episode 40.2. You're currently listening to episode 40.1. This part of the episode, or... Yeah, this part of the episode, really, uh, 40.1, will have the first two segments, concluding with Siegel's interview. 40.2, however, if you do uh, happen to listen to that, and I really, really suggest that you do, will be the entire roundtable, including myself, Will, Alpha Zealot, and Ian Brandon. So that's the lowdown for episode 40. Please listen to both parts, 40.1, 40.2. I hope you guys all enjoy it. So, here you go. We're back, and we're very happy that you guys are here listening to us. So... Enjoy. Yeah, it's commentary, son. Holy shit! I hear myself thinking. One little action can really make a whole huge deal in the entire set. The idiot you did was a fucking stupid. Happy B, Bravo Gamo, and I found him. Now you're talking to him. PC survives that attack. Both players are on their feet again to hit each other. Oh, oh my god. Ayo, hey, everybody. Welcome to Traction Flint, <laughs> episode 40. Oh my god, it's great to be back. We have been, we are back off from our break, and we're back to our regular podcast format, as you should probably tell, because you're not watching this, you're listening to it. And I am Rapture, you know, <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. And I'm here with my bestest buddy ever, who's always here with me, except a few episodes, but he's always mostly here, and he's cranked up on energy drinks. Will, how you doing? Yo, I am so amped right now, and I'm so excited about this episode, you guys. Probably already know, but... We're all excited because it's been a long time since we've done one of these episodes, and uh, it's been it's our 40th episode, which is hype, because that's 40, which is a 4 and a 0. That's a pretty big number, man. It is. Oh, and speaking of which, who just jumps right in here with that introduction is Nakat. How you doing, Nakitty? Stop calling me that. Yo, man. everybody, Nicole, Nakat is also known as Dr. Dre. No, I'm not. No, Do- I'm not. He looks like Dr. Dre. No, I don't. Yo, real talk, I don't know why you say that because he, he does, does not look like Dr. Dre. He looks like uh, he looks like <laughs> a younger Dr. Dre, like Jay-Z sort of combo. Okay, oh, if stop you say so. Yo, I love you. Don't worry about it. Yay. All right, no homo, though. Well, sort of homo, but no homo. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we have a stacked episode for you guys here tonight. And by stacked, I mean like New York, New Jersey stacked. So obviously we have Nick Kitty here, uh, who uh, is joining us to talk about play and trade, which we just – oh my god. Pray and trade? Pray and trade. You did it again. Pray. I did it again. Pray, pray and trade, which was hosted by Yes in Hackensack, New Jersey, uh, at a church – aptly speaking, uh, and that was really hype. That was uh, this past Saturday, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Anti putting in work at E4J oh, over boy. in California because he decided to go over there like, yo, about to tear up East, uh, West Coast. So losing to nobody except Mike Hayes once, who he then ended up beating, and then Mewtwo King because it's Mewtwo King. And then after that, we're going to talk about the latest metagame minute and we all know why we're going to talk about that, because we have our resident DK main here, Will, who is hyped, because after three years, DK finally has something that he can use in tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And then, yeah, there's still more shit to talk about, guys. After that, I have an interview with Seagull Man. Seagull Man, the wolf main from MDVA, who's going to talk to us about Wolf and his success. And as long as Pain's not in the video. We'll Pain go. is not at all in this episode. Like, yeah. Don't you worry. I'm about to grab my Snapple Mango Madness. Mm. Ah, that's good. I love that shit. And then after that, like, 
there's more because we have well i just like after saying all that i'm like wow we have a lot of fucking shit but yeah there's like way too much shit on this episode (laughs) after that we have the one and only and the one and only alpha zealot and dm brandon we're gonna be talking dragon dragon master brandon dragon master brandon uh who (laughs) the two of them are gonna be talking about important super smash brothers brawl community related topics uh to be honest, I, I at this point, I actually don't know what those topics are going to be, so I'll be as surprised as much as the rest of you guys will be. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Episode 40, we're back, how you love us, and we're very happy that we are, so stay tuned. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll, what do you want to start with? Anti-play and the uh, prey and trade? <laughs> or DK? Um, I guess we could start talking about what we don't know the most about, which would be anti, but we'll just cover what we can. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to talk too much about it, and then we want to go... Yeah, we can't, really. Okay. All right, three, <clears throat> two, one. So, uh, one of the most hyped things, rep in Long Island. I know uh, Nakat isn't from Long Island, but I don't give a fuck. He's from our region. Uh, rep in us was anti. Um, he's like, yo, I'm about to go over to California and beat everybody except Mewtwo King. So we're like, okay. So he goes over to California, and he beats everybody except Mewtwo King. And... Um, uh, E4J, which was ran by Mike Hayes, um, it was in a pizza place. I know that for a fact, which is hype. People were like, "Oh, why would you have it at a pizza place?" I because there's like pizza there with hell. Um, it was in it was in Havoc's favorite pizza place in San Diego. Yes, <laughs> that's shout pretty hype. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Havoc for picking that venue. Um, because I I for one, if someone said, "Hey, I'll run a tournament in a pizza place," I'd be like, I'm there because I love pizza and I love brawl. And putting those two together, it's like God, peanut God. butter and jelly. It's like peanut butter and jelly. So Anti did win. Um, pretty sure Anti was like consistently beating everybody. Then he, uh, like I said, only lost to Mewtwo, uh, Mike Hayes. And Mewtwo King. And Mewtwo King. He actually lost to, to Mike Hayes very early on. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he, beat, he beat Hall round one. He beat Hall. Then he lost to uh, Mike Hayes round two when he was immediately put into losers. Yeah. yeah, and this was after pools because there were pools, but you know, he but cruised then, through pools. But then but, he uh, was like, "Okay, losers bracket." Uh, he had like one of the most epic runs I've ever seen in losers bracket. Yeah, that was godlike. Uh, just then, like, down, like people a that bunch he of big names. Yep. Um. So then, um, Mewtwo King swept Mike Hayes in winners finals. So Anti and Mike Hayes rematched. Anti goes Diddy Kong. And beats Mike Hayes, only for Anti to get three stocked in game two. But the- Anti actually texted me like to explaining his choice in that because like Havoc was actually really confused. If you check out his Twitter, he was like, Anti goes Diddy Kong, but Anti said that you know he, he was having a really hard time. He doesn't like fighting Marth in general. Yeah. And Mike Hayes is just mad good, so yeah. he's like he's like yo, I just couldn't do it with MK. So he goes and his, he has a mad solid Diddy, so he's got that versatility. He has a solid everything. Solid everything. Yeah. And uh, he was able to shut down Mike Hayes for game two, uh, game three, so he did take the series. Um, it was actually 3-1. Yeah, 3-1, I'm sorry. Um, I was Yeah, so then Anti moves on to place against uh, Mewtwo King, and Mewtwo King's like, yo, three-stock you. And th- not three-stock you, 3 uh, you. Um, and he did, so Anti did not win a game against Mewtwo King at all. Uh, Mewtwo King went Wario game one, actually, of Grand, grand Finals. Uh, I believe he went... I don't know what he went in game two, but I, maybe he went Meta Knight because then he went Game uh, game and Watch game three. Um, and there was no splitting anybody, everybody. There was no splitting, so shout-outs to that progressive tournament experience for no um, no splitting. But we do want to congratulate Anti for doing an amazing job and repping us. Uh, I mean, no, there's nothing to scoff at for beating, you know, Rich Brown, Mike Hayes, <laughs> I mean, who else did he beat? Like he beat he beat Tyrant two mm-hmm. one. He beat TKD two zero, which they never played before, and that was supposed to be really really hyped up. And like, keep this in mind, Anti had also never traveled to West Coast before, yeah. so uh, people have only heard things, but not all of them have either met, seen, or like seen him play at all. So he definitely just like showed up and just, like, bodied people. It was crazy. He really did, and that was a really crazy experience. Oh, and shout-outs to my boy Rich Brown, who got 
Three stock game two by Anti. <laughs> Shout out to Rich Brown. Rich Brown. I love Rich like Brown. The buzz practice. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, really. Like Anti knows his matchups clearly, but then he doesn't know that Mewtwo King uh, matchup. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, second oh, place is something unexpected. Um, what? He beat TKD. Well, it was unexpected for me. Yep, it I heard TKD be. went on uh, Meta Knight game one, and then he actually did go Fox game two, but. Uh, okay. I would like to. I would like to see those matches. I hope yeah. some of them were recorded, but I would hope so too. I how that went. And I would love to see the full results, but West Coast, no results apparently. I cannot yeah. find them. So, but anyway, uh, yeah. Shoutouts to Anti for doing an amazing job and repping us and being <laughs> godlike at this game. So, good job to him. Now, speaking of godlike, uh, God is my rock, or Gimmer, as many of you guys like to know him. Uh, Meta Game Minute. Uh, yeah, Meta Game Minute is very much one of the most important things the community has right now because we get to see some amazing stuff that is very useful in tournament as long as you're able to master it. And one of the things that was just recently announced for the Meta Game Minute, the la- latest episode, something our man Will here is pretty much very like, yo, jizz in my pants, sort of happy about because <sighs> yo, I got I, a story actually, for you, you guys. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I got it. a story for you guys. All right. Did you cry? So. So last night, see, I was actually kind of in the know on this a little bit, like, before anyone, so hype, but I was talking to Gimmer on AIM, and he just, like, messaged me randomly, he's like, it's like, so about this up B, like, how does it work? And we just kind of talked, and I was telling him all the frames, he was looking at the the, uh, frame data thread and the DK boards, and I was telling him how, you know, there's a super armor up B from the platform, which people still don't know about, shout outs to Texas. Um, there's that, that pseudo invincibility glitch that DK has on Yoshi's and Picto chat and rainbow cruise and <clears throat> everywhere now that Gimmer has come up with this crit, like he tested it for three hours after I told him the properties of everything and he researched everything within three hours, he came up with an AT that DKs didn't know about. Yep, the entire the game's been out for three years. DK collaborator did <laughs> not know about this, uh, and Gimmer finds out in three hours, and he doesn't even main DK. This man <laughs> is a job. genius, everybody. <laughs> so, pretty much, like, you guys need to all check out the video. We should, like, plug it and link it I'm going to, like, to. DI. You because will. I will. Basically, in a nutshell, there are three different ways that I've heard of, two that are described in the video, to pull off the pseudo-invincibility up B glitch on any stage and all you need is an edge or the edge of a platform which like i flipped out when he said it because i was like no you're kidding me like this is ridiculous because this gives dk like so many more options and basically he could just hit through everything like anything transcendent he could just go right through especially on battlefield so yeah, for a fuck Yoshi, you're about to ban Battlefield on you. Like, any platform, just like... You can't ban anything, man. You really can't. <laughs> you can't ban anything, because he's just gonna super armor everything. That's so dumb. Like, ban this character. So, Will, how are you gonna use this to your advantage? If he masters Yo, it. I'm gonna go Battlefield on everyone until, it, like, it becomes so broken that that stage just, like, becomes my bitch. And people ban Battlefield, so then I have Yoshi's open. Like, that's my that's my goal. So... Pretty much, Will is going to be... Fox, man. Um, <laughs> and uh, the two ways that, like, just to briefly explain, because I'm not going to go into full detail, but there, it's very frame-specific, uh, so it's going to be hard to pull off. But if DK runs at the edge, pivots, then at a certain time during his, uh, his pivot of his dash, you jump and then up B on two consecutive frames... And then that gives you the invincibility. Like, what? Like, Gimmer found out with the physics of this game. <laughs> if you actually spend time doing it, that'd be a lazy bug. Yeah, I'm definitely going to practice this. And also, you could do it just by running, sliding in your shield, and then waiting until frame 23 in your shield, and then do the jump up B, and that gives you it too. And you could edge guard with it. Yeah, I saw that shit. That was stupid. Like, <laughs> you have invincibility ledge, gra- uh, ledge guarding, and then you automatically just grab the ledge because the animation yeah. is right next to it. That's so. Yo, fuck that character, <laughs> man. Fuck and that. there was someone also from Europe that found out another use of it that is actually really practical, and it kind of sets up like a wall of death. You can land with a back air. 
but land it low with lag so that you slide toward the edge so that you get the same sliding animation. Then do the shield into up B, I think. And, like, it's pretty much, like, back air to invincible up B edge guard. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So, well, uh, DK, fuck. Yo, how does DK he work? Is moving up. How does up, DK well, work? Up. He went up two spots in the tier list type. Like, for the first time ever, he's been So down now he's spot. negative six from his yeah, original spot. I think DK original. belongs, like, belong, but like right below Fox, in my opinion. Yeah. He, sure. Yeah, he's definitely moving up there. So I'm trying to trying to tell all the DK mans out there, yo, got to master this shit. It's going to be hard. But, yo, DK is technical now, guys. So. Technical. Never would have saw the light of day if <laughs> Giver didn't decide to... <laughs> Like yo, like yo, how does this work? Lol. Like, let, let me teach you this game. Yeah. Yo. But anyway, uh, before anyone actually found this out, or before like there was this was really official, we had a tournament this past Saturday that I do do not believe Will was able to use this awesome technique, so I believe he got like last, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> sure. And uh, that tournament. Uh, excuse me, I just laughed at my own joke. Uh, that tournament was Prey and Trade, hosted by Yes in Hackensack, New Jersey. The last, uh, I guess, of his tournaments in our area because he's moving, which sucks. That's so sad. Yeah, he's moving for an internship, uh, a yearly inter- internship in Missouri. So we're all going to miss him. We are, and I'm very glad that we uh, were able to make it out there. And uh, it's funny because, you know, even though... Uh, the lot of us did go. There are actually two different very awesome carpooling situations, I guess, that happened. Uh, whatever happened with the cat, but at least I know, at the very least, that the carpool that included myself, Minty, uh, Viva, w- obviously Will, who drove, and Jash was fucking hype. And it was <laughs> wa- probably the best carpool that ever existed in the entirety of the history of ever. Of ever. See... It actually sucked at one point because, like, we were in this crazy traffic. There was this really bad accident on the uh, Long Island Expressway. Oh, that sucked. But once I hit that avoid toll and we, like, cruised through Queens Boulevard, got kind of lost. Once, But once we got, like, on the east side of Manhattan and started heading north on uh, FDR Drive North and I started blasting that dubstep. No, dubstep. It was, it was that over. Dubstep. That dubstep yeah. was really hype. And in yeah, fact, it was over. That Skrillex. And yeah, and it was funny because the best part I think about the carpool was actually the way back. Um, because we had a cram. Well, we had to bring Vinny into the car because Vinny had to go home. So um, I, I was originally sitting shotgun. So I had to go sit in the back um, with Jash and Viva Sid Bitch. And uh, that was the most hype thing because we were went through New York City playing dubstep and yelling I'd beat at every girl we saw out the window. <laughs> <laughs> it was the hypest thing. And you know, by the way, Viva is the worst at that shit because you're not supposed to yell out of your car at people when you're stopped at a red light. Am I Oh, get real. Yeah, like he'd be I'd be like, yo, I'd beat like to like a few hot girls or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool, we keep driving. And yo, then, shout outs to Vinny who stayed asleep the entire time. Yeah, yeah, back. he did. I was we were yelling <laughs> and screaming and playing mad loud dubstep and Vinny's like, I'm asleep the entire time. And he when we stopped at like I I don't know, we stopped somewhere and like he was like hunched over in a ball in the front. Um and, oh, we stopped. Uh, I don't know where we stopped, but I remember Viva like yelling at these like girls who were a bunch next to a bunch of guys, and I'm like, oh, we're at a red light. Like, good read, bro. <laughs> Stick to brawl. Um, but that was really hype. The tournament itself was actually really fun. It was at a church. That's why it was called Pray and Trade. Um, we had a lot of people actually go to this. Um, the, I mean, yeah, there are actually a lot of fucking people that went to this tournament, uh, including some that don't necessarily enter all the time like jg wentworth yeah yes did a really good job like Yo, hyping this yes event for like a short good. kind of short notice and, like not a regional event at all like but a lot of people came you know bleachigo was there i was hyped bleachigo bleachigo Yo, shout out to bleachigo and yo oh my yeah God. You, your crew, man, like your you guys, you spacies, just like <laughs> kind of like bodied this tournament. Yo, I don't know. Leap of faith, son, in the top five. <laughs> Leap of faith, Leap of Kiwi. Yeah. So, I, so the the results were um, in doubles. I mean, ADHD and Iro won. Like, 
Diddy, MK, or whatever. <laughs> Shout out to them though for doing doing work though. Yeah, uh, their team is like unstoppable. They uh they played Kool Aid and Atomisk in grand finals. Malcolm and J Tail. Malcolm did work at this tournament. Uh, he ended up getting seventh, which is hype. So he made it in the money in singles, but he got third with J Tails in doubles. Then Minty and Viva. Uh, Viva never enters shit. Yo, that was a crazy upset. Them coming in fourth. Yeah, they were actually crazy. really good. Wait, I mean, Minty like, and Viva? Yeah, they got yeah. fourth. My boy. I, I heard they, they yeah they beat um Pee Wee and Inui. Yeah, they like, did. I was like, and wow, Inui jawed about crazy. it mad hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did a lot of work. Uh, Vinny and Yes got fifth. Inui and Pee Wee also with fifth. Cable and Gunblade. Shouts to Cable and Gunblade doing work. Icon and RJ. And then from there it sort of went down. Uh, with Alex Strife and his team <laughs> getting last, like the last, like it was really like literally there's only one twenty fifth spot. It's Alex Strife. Yo, Alex is definitely getting better though. Like yeah, he is. Compliments to his Fal. I was seeing his Falco do some work. So yeah, he, he's getting. He's definitely getting a lot better. Uh, me and Raptor. Uh, entered with the courtesy of everyone else so that way because our teams are so I mean our names are so uh, similar that it would only make sense that we were teamed together and we went Mennonite Yoshi and that was actually a lot of fun even though we didn't do well but it was fun um, yeah, you know what we can't forget though we uh, can't forget the amazingness of Pee Wee for housing us the night before we Smash Fest was hype that was for him, awesome for him bodying singles the next day and yep. for this being you know like the, his last Smash Fest on the East Coast, his last at least for like his a last long tournament. time. His last tournament, his 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 farewell tournament, guys. Like, shout outs and to shout outs to my boy. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, we love Pee Wee. Uh, so shout outs to him for being legit. In fact, he got third, and we were all watching him take on Atomisk, which was hype. But then he fell to Nairo, I believe. So yeah. Uh, so ADHD. That was a really close cool set, though. That was it really was good really set. close. Um. But anyway, ADHD took first. Without Anto there, ADHD was like, LOL, first place for both, <laughs> both uh, tournaments. Uh, Nairo came in second. Obviously, Pee Wee came in third. Adam Misk followed him. Nakat getting fifth. So, shout outs to my boy Nakat, who's right Word. here. Uh, oh, tied yeah. with him was Bleachigo, who did a lot of work, actually. Um, and took out Will, who was very salty about that for losing the spaces. Listen, oh, I lost to oh, I lost what? to double fifth placers, yo. I'm not I'm not too salty. Yo, you lost to Bleach I didn't know that. Yo, I did, man. Game three. All right, I'm gonna John. Game one was on a flash screen. <laughs> I'm out to John. And it felt like MLG because I got two stocked. I couldn't power shield. I couldn't fast fall. I was like, all right, we gotta switch TVs. So I took him to Lilat. I beat him pretty solid. Game three, I was winning by a lot. I was up an entire stock, and then on my last stock, I just got grabbed. He was at 93%. I was at zero, both on our last stocks, and he just got that chain grab in there. All of a sudden, the damage was even, and then just went to last hit, and he got it. So yeah. Homie said, I got to switch TVs. This is serious. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Will was and, like... Never again will I re-experience MLG. Never again on a flat screen. You know, will, was, will was playing flat screen, and Will was like, I can't fast fall. <laughs> no, that's funny though. Um, and then from there, Jash, Jash did work. Fine, again, that sixteen dollars twenty five cents. Jash was so proud of making money with Toon. Like he hasn't made money with Toon Link at a really, really. His Toon Link is so like, this, good. It's like, so cute. If he 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 if he puts in some more work, like Jash is gonna be the biggest threat. Cause fuck Toon Link. Yo, he um, doesn't even have a Wii. He just he's borrowing Alex's right now, so he's actually. No, he's not really back. borrowing. He's uh, Alex left his Wii there, and we gave it to Josh. <laughs> yeah, it's more We're like, like well, here's your shit. I'm not gonna drive back to Alex's house, so you can have this, Josh. He's like, oh word, I oh, get the word. practice. Yeah. So from there, uh, Will getting just outside the money, and then blah 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 blah. Um, the, probably the most interesting set though. Well, actually, two interesting sets before we move on to the next segment. Um, first of all, Zorai versus VV Cheese. Jesus. Zorai oh, is Zorai the Wi-Fi Zorai came out of Zorai oh. is the uh the stereotypical Wi-Fi Marth playing cheese round two of winners and getting the luckiest luckiest shield breaker on cheese. <laughs> it was literally perfect on Pokemon Stadium and he somehow I don't know I, oh my god the the crowd that that surrounded that game uh, she still outranked him though, but and I'm sure she will tell you that. But then, but then, um, the probably the most interesting thing though, uh, hold on, 
I actually I want some. Do you guys know about this? The the puff the puffster and uh. Del- yes, dude. I was standing right oh there. My God. I know the story. Like I was right there. <laughs> yeah, I was there too. So pretty much what happened. I'll tell you guys what happened. Oh my God, it was so good. I'll tell you guys what happened. Uh, Delta Cod and Puffster were playing uh, Yoshi Jigglypuff, and it was the Puffster's um, intention to time out Delta Cod. Delta Cod's like, "Yo, I got this," and he doesn't give up. He doesn't, you know, doesn't fall down to that camping. Uh, with what could be mere seconds. Did you know the specifics? Because I know the specifics. Oh, you know the specifics? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I heard that they were both in the in midair, and like Diddy was was side being, and he was trying to go overhead over Yoshi or something. And apparently, when Diddy's side being, if he's hit out of that, like he's kind of putting in into like this weird animation. Like I don't know what happened really, but I'm pretty sure that Delta hit him with an egg while he was side trying to side be over his head. Then as there were literally, like, seconds on the clock, like, Diddy was trying to get away, and he was trying to up B, and Yo- and Delta Cod does, like, this suicide, like, fast fall nair just to clip him with, like, one second left, and he wins by percent. <laughs> and, uh, and and from there, the officer slams the table, yells, God damn it, <laughs> storms out of the venue, and is never seen again. I actually don't yeah, we actually, Yeah, we actually didn't see him at all. That was like halfway through the tournament. Too. Yeah, like he well, I'm pretty oh. sure that was losers, so like he actually didn't have to stay, but no, he he stormed out. I I honestly he vanished as far as I'm concerned. No no hate the publisher. We hope you made it home safe and everything. Yeah, but we did. that was um that was a hilarious. Yeah, well, you really you course. made it really funny for us. So thanks for that. I don't even blame Pubster though. Like Delta Cod, I was winning by like a hundred percent, and he just he timed me out. He timed himself out just to piss me off. <laughs> wow. He wouldn't let me kill him. <laughs> I don't know wow. why he does this, but whatever. God, man. Delta Cod. Yo, Delta Cod. Delta Cod. Shout outs. I definitely beat Yoshi at this, at this tournament. I beat him. I don't know how, yo. Like, it didn't feel like he was camping. I think, you know what? It's because I planked him mad hard. Like, he yeah, tried to camp now, me, but I planked him so hard that I don't think he knew what to do. And now next tournament, he can do it with invincibility frames all the day. So, yeah, next segment. Enough about DK. Enough about Yoshi. Enough about everybody. Enough Time about Rapture. To, enough about Rapture because I'm booty. I placed last pretty much. Um, we're talking to Seagull Man about Wolf. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, I have a very special interview for you guys all here, episode 40, which I'm hyped about. I have the one and only Joe Siegelman. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, Rapture, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm going to have to – everybody knows this, but um, I do not like Wolf as a character. But I, I can't, like, I can't ignore – uh, the recent wolf interest I've seen, and you being the wolf main that you are, uh, I mean, I guess tell us about your successes with Wolf, like why you started playing the character and where you are right now. Well, I guess I started in 08, around March. I picked up the game, and I started using Ganondorf. Now, I was mainly a Wi-Fi player, and um, I can't, when I, when I um, discovered Smash Wars, it wasn't until, like, September. I didn't know where to find tournaments, but I just originated on GameBattle.com. I think a lot of people were from there, but I saw a lot of pros there, and I didn't know who was, you know, who was really good. I just knew Snake was really good based on who was at the top, which was like DSF and and a Bowser named Warrior Knight. So eventually, I started using Wolf in April, and obviously he was really good on Wi-Fi, but I didn't want to use him like most other you know, Wi-Fi players did, which mostly just spam, forward smash, and and laser. So I discovered that, you know, his bear is really good. So I was using, you know, le- uh, almost no laser and a ton of just aerials in general. So my first offline tournament was like in uh, September, and I didn't do really good at all. I, I think I beat one or two people, and I lost to, like, a Lucario and a DDD. Though in tournament, I was using mostly Game & Watch because he was the hype character of Oh wait, around that time, I guess I started using Wolf mainly around uh, early '09, and a little Bowser too. Um, so you need my, you want to know my successes with him? 
Uh, yeah, just like where are you like right now? Your recent successes? You well, know, recently where you stand? I've just been uh, I guess dominating my own region a little bit. Uh, I'm fourth on the PR there for Wolf and uh, slightly Mennonite because I old MK for some matches like DV and Wario. But um, I don't. Uh, I've just learned a lot of matchups over time through mostly training and figuring out spacing. If you learn most about your character, then it doesn't matter if you use a decent character how much you how much you can do because you'll, you'll do fine. But if you if you learn the Meta Knight matchup with whatever character do you use and your character is okay, then usually you can have a pretty easy time. MDVA is a little different though because we have like a variety of everything. In terms of characters, we have like one of everything at least. I mean, I verse No Idea, Samus, Takeover Snake, uh, Neo's Mars, Tommy's Meta Knight, Tony's Deity. There's so much variety in NDVA. So it helps that I was I could be able to play so many matches offline and get so much experience. I only live like 20 minutes from like everyone in the same vicinity. So I didn't really train much on Wi-Fi like most people have, but I, ha- I found more success with just going offline and just playing matches straight up. And I've also watched a lot of videos like Kane, Choice, JJ Wolf, uh, Semifer, Holmes, uh, Jumpman, even any wolf. I've watched like every single video just to figure out what they're doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And um, I guess it's worked because I usually get top three now at most of my locals, and I usually do good out of state anywhere except Jersey. It seems because Jersey's pretty stacked in general. Though when I do go to Jersey, I've only really lost to their PR members, their Mennonite PR members, pretty much. Um, I think I could still get better, but I gotta still work on it. Well, I mean, it's impressive considering the you know the character you use. But then again, uh, looking at the new tier list, Wolf went up six places. Can you at least explain to us why why that is, or at least do you know why that could be? Well, that probably has a lot to do with the fact that there, it's really hard to become great with Wolf, but it's easy to become good with him. And the Wolves who are great usually do, perform very well. As you've seen, Kane pretty much dominates the entire Midwest at this point, and he uses it purely off of just reading, mind games, and spacing. He, I mean, well, not even much mind games. He doesn't have much, but he just spaces aerials and, and, perform, and has good DI. That's, that's like all you need. The fact that Mennonite's also in the scene kind of helps because Mennonite diminishes Wolf's bad matchups of Wario, Deity, and Pikachu. Though to be honest, the only character that would have to be really decreased at all would be Deity for Wolf to, be, to remain viable. Because Pikachu is um, not that bad of a matchup, and very few Warriors can actually do the chain grab to make it a bad matchup. Otherwise, it's an even matchup. So. Basically, me, Kane, Holmes, and Choice kind of had an influence on the tier list. And since Europe also can affect the tier list, um, the contributions of a wolf from Germany named Semifer had um, an impact. He's ranked, I think, third on their PR. He plays, like most of Europe plays aggro, but for wolf, you can actually play aggro. He's, he's, he's an aggro character. So you need some camping in, of course, you know, some sprawl, but you can play aggro. And as long as you know the Meta Knight matchup with Wolf, you're usually fine. Hmm. And he also has um, a minus one matchup with Falco, Diddy, Snake, and Meta Knight currently. Though I think he's even with uh, Snake and Diddy. But that kind of helps also, because most characters cannot say that they only lose to the top four only slightly. And to go even with Mark, even. Okay. And you said Wolf is, is an aggro character. So how do you... Can you describe to us how exactly you play Wolf to make him an aggro character? Well, I guess it, it's different when I explain it, because when I say aggro, the main thing about Wolf is looking aggro. Like, you're not going to just, you know, go full in and attack constantly. But Wolf is a character that looks aggro all the time. You rarely see a Wolf just sitting there camping with lasers, because it's a really... Well, it's a dumb thing to do, and it's laggy. It takes, like, about 42 frames for a laser to even fully go and end. 
so wolves use a lot of bear and a lot of fair. And those two moves in conjunction are just really good and almost perfectly based on shield. They can't be punished. Two characters can punish him. And I guess if you're going into super theory craft, then you can punish him with random SDI and stuff. But other than that, he just looks aggro. Pretty much. Okay. And where is Wolf sitting in the metagame right now? I mean, as I said, he went up six spots in the tier list. As you said, he's an aggro character, but you have to obviously watch those matchups like Meta Knight. So where do you think he's sitting in that metagame? Do you think he can move anywhere? Do you think that maybe he's changing as a character because of the people who play him? Like like what? Honestly, Wolf could move higher, but the only way for him to move higher would, I think, for other characters to move lower. Now, for me, let me explain that. Basically, I think Wolf, Fox, Game & Watch, and Toon Link all share about the same tier. I, I don't know why they're not in the same one at the moment. Toon Link in high tier and Fox and Wolf and Game & Watch all around there. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I think those four characters are around the same, the same tier. They should be. Um, I don't think Peach belongs to them. I think Peach belongs one lower. She just doesn't have as much going for her. Her matchups are, I guess they're okay, but she, she lacks killing. Lacks a ton of killing. But I see Wolf, he can move up th- above those three characters only if they start perform- performing work. I could never see Wolf above 13th on the tier list. That'd be too high for him. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think here. I mean, with Wolf, Wolf is an odd character. I don't think a lot of people actually know the Wolf matchup, at least in my experience. And uh, in my region, especially where I live, I live right near Payne, who's a Wolf user in Long Island. Uh, I mean, Wolf, Wolf's, uh, I guess, presence in tournament is obviously not as big as, like, Meta Knight or even Snake or Diddy or anyone really in that tier. Uh, do you think maybe we'll see more Wolf presence in coming tournaments? Do you think that Wolf was maybe going to go somewhere in terms of more usage? Or is he going to be one of those, like, uh, like Zero Suit Samus sort of characters that very few people use, but people who do use her or him are very good? Well, I could see more people using Wolf, but not as a main. They could use him as an alt. But then again, I wouldn't see what people would use Wolf as an alt, because he doesn't really help a ton in certain matchups. In terms of matchups, he's almost even with the entire cast of who he does not have a disadvantage on. People could use him because he, he went up, but they would have to put a lot of time into him. You can't just, like, pick him up like Meta Knight and expect to do okay or well. Uh, I could see some people picking him up, but I've seen, I mean, I've already seen people do that in the past. Adamus, Exact, Ally, they picked up Wolf and they could do fine, but they're not going to main Wolf. They're always going to use a different character, and that's probably a smarter decision on their part. Okay. Uh, And I'm actually, I'm sort of trying to think here, like, Wolf's matchups because it isn't like a Fox situation. If I was interviewing a Fox main, it was like, oh, well, what about you think about MK Fox? But do you think there's any like matchup that's either particularly good or bad for Wolf or one that's like controversial or something like that? Well, I think Pikachu versus Wolf is pretty controversial. It comes down to intense theory craft at this point because uh, there aren't many Pikachus for Wolf to play and vice versa. When I do play Pikachus, I haven't really had any problems, but I've never played, like, ESAM, really, or Anther to be, to, like, try out top-level play. Kane used to play Anther all the time, so he's got a lot of Pikachu experience. In terms of Wolf's worst matchup, in my opinion, it's definitely DDD, because DDD's just a fortress. He's heavy, he's a chain grab on Wolf, he's got a free down tilt on Wolf out of chain, out of a down throw, and he's really, really hard to kill because Wolves will be staling every move alive and it's just really hard to kill him. Wolf probably, you uh, know, what was the other part of the question? His his, his best? His most advantage this matchup? Yo, in, ter- in terms of characters that are, like, actually, you know, viable, I guess. Oh, and viable? Well, in terms of viable, I guess he's good against, like, Marth and... Uh, uh, in terms of high tiers, Marth, he's good against Lucario, Zero Suit. He doesn't have any advantage on high tiers. He's only even with them or light disadvantage. That's, a, that's the thing. I think he could be uh, an advantage on Marth, but I can only see it as even at the moment. 
at least for based on watching people. Okay. In terms of non-viable characters, though, he kind of wrecks. Oh yeah, yeah, I would assume so. He wrecks Yoshi and Bowser and uh, Ganon and some random characters. Yeah. Uh, now I, I do want to ask this though. In uh, I mean, with every character, I think there's always like a thing or two that becomes like a trend that we see in in character usage. That you know, the mains are starting to do this sort of pattern. Uh, is there anything right now you're seeing in the wolf means that they're sort of doing more of or they need to do more of? Well, lately I've been seeing them. Yeah, a lot of them use um, you know how snakes be reversal in the air to avoid stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, the wolves have been doing that a lot lately with Fear Reversal Blaster. And they should be doing it more because the one problem Wolf has is one of its main disadvantages is because he suffers from RCO lag or landing penalty, which means every time he upbees or sidebees, he has to auto cancel on the ground with an aerial or he's going to suffer a lot of lag. And his character specifically suffers the most landing penalty of any character with his upbee. It's got 35 frames, which is like. A free snake forward smash if if snake reads it correctly. So what the beer reversal laser does is allows Wolf to get back on stage or grab a ledge without having to use his up your side beat. Since his aerial mobility is already extremely good, it's about as uh, slightly slightly less than Wario's. Okay. Now one more. Uh, where are you? Um. Hmm. Okay. One more. What do you? What are your like future endeavors with Wolf? Like, what are the big tournaments you're going to, and how do you see your Wolf advancing in terms of the way you play him? The next few tournaments I know I'm going to is going to be this MDVA local Tony's Epic of Odinson on the um, 23rd. Though I think he named it something else. I'll probably also be going to Katar. At Tony's, I expect to get top five probably, and at Katar, I'll probably uh, I don't know. It depends on my bracket. I imagine. Maybe 13th, 25th, or 33rd. It depends also on the uh, number of entrants. And in the future, I'll be going to Apex, as far as I know, for tournaments in the future, for big tournaments. Apex 2012. And uh, I'll get out of pools at that and then probably beat one or two people, probably. Get 25th or 13th, maybe. Lose to a Meta Knight or a DDD. That's usually what happens at Nationals for me. <laughs> okay, well, I want to thank you for taking this time to talk about yourself and Wolf. As much as I don't like the character, I gotta respect him and everyone who uses him. And uh, I, I hope, like, I wish you the best in all your next tournaments, and I hope you do very well. Thanks, Rasher. All right. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed episode forty point one. Just did a segment with Nakat and Seagull Man. It was really awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But we're not done yet. If you guys are still hungry for more DI, and I hope you guys all are, then please hit up episode 40.2, where myself and Will sit down for a roundtable discussion to talk about the most important things in Brawl today, with the one and only DM Brandon, and of course, Alpha Zealot. So please switch over to episode 40.2, and enjoy the rest of this episode.